Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This week we're kicking it off in Bawarana because we've come to see something older than the pyramids. So go and get yourself a cold drink and get your feet up for the next 20-30 minutes or so and come and join the adventure. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Alison. We decided a couple of years ago that we'd work hard and save all of our money and start living life on our own terms. So we bought a caravan and hit the road on a trip for two all around Australia. So why not come and join us every week for our adventures? Well, g'day everyone. Before we start today's video, we thought we'd jump in really quick at the start and just welcome all of our new subscribers and a big shout out to all of our originals. Yes, thanks everyone for subscribing. It's um, it's really been a pleasant surprise to us, to be honest. And, yes. we've, and we've really enjoyed watching the numbers increase. Oh, we were shocked. I said to Alison the other day, we were having dinner, I said, there must be something on our subscriber count. It started to go through the roof. I think we had 400 people join in a week. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, it's been absolutely fantastic. But anyway, on to bigger and better things. We're about to celebrate our first year on the road and we want to involve you into that. And what we thought we might do is ask you to ask us questions about our experiences as we've travelled around Australia so far. Yes, um, anything you have on your mind you want to know about or if you're planning yourself, um, some little questions that might help you out um, in your planning process, please let us know. Yeah, so if you're not sure about free camping or what sort of gear you might need to take or that a Holden Colorado really is the best tow vehicle in the country or something along those lines. <laughs> then hit us up in the comment section. You can get us through our Facebook page, Trip for Two Australia, or our Insta page, Trip for Two Australia, or just drop a comment in this video. Now, we won't answer them all now because we're going to use some of those questions in our video, which you'll see in the next couple of weeks. But once again, thank you for all of your support. We're about to kick off today's episode, so why don't you kick back and enjoy our adventure? Yes, enjoy. Well, let me give you a bit of a look around the campsite. We're set right up on the bank of the Barwon River. Well, as close as you can get for this campsite. But here we are here. Just got a nice grassed area here. And there's the river right in front of us. Um, you'll see in the background there, there's a bridge. The road is close and traffic does run over it till reasonably late at night. In fact, last night it went through till about midnight. You hear the odd truck go through, but nothing to disturb you too much. The campgrounds are located just outside of Bawarana and they're at a rest area. So you do get the benefits of the rest area if you come down here. So there's toilets. You can see them just over the back over here. There's also some picnic tables and some barbecues. There's a pontoon. If you're into your fishing, you can come down and fish off the pontoon. Or if you're into your boating, there's also a boat ramp here that you can put your boat in. The other things that we found around the park was obviously just some history and some information about the town. And there's a workout area, so if you're into your fitness, there's somewhere you can come and work out as well. This is the old bridge in Bawarana. It was built in 1888. Um, you can see in the centre there's a section that can be raised and that was raised up when the old paddle wheelers used to come through that were towing barges full of bales of wool. While we've been here, we've seen a lot of the locals and they come down and they park exactly where I'm standing now, just with the view of the old bridge in the background there. It's a, it's a great spot, really tranquil. Um, come down have their lunch someone throw a bit of a line in i'm sure there's a couple of yabby pots get set from time to time because the fishing in the river is fantastic but it's a little bit better further up the river i'm going to take you up and show you um, one of the fishing spots here which they call the money hole where you can come and get a lot of yellow belly you can also get a lot of carp so if you do catch any carp when you're in areas like this it's illegal for you to put them back into the water just make sure that you leave them up on the bank um, because they are a pest in our river systems Well, we're here at the Barwon River in Bawarana and we're just down near the weir. Now, if you come down a little bit further from the weir, you find something that is truly amazing. Yes. There is some Aboriginal fish traps that were put here and they date them to be older than 40,000 years, which is makes it, I think, almost or the oldest man-made structure on earth. I think it outdates the pyramids by about 20,000 years. Okay, yeah. And it's all here in our backyard. You know what I find very, very disappointing? is uh, when I was younger and I went to school, I learned everything about overseas and I learned nothing about here. And it's not now that I'm nearly 60 years old and I get out and about, but I get to see 
things that I should have learned about when I was 10 to 20 years old. A few of the fish traps from here, so I'll go and grab the drone, we'll throw it up and give you a bit of a look. They reckon on a really clear day, you can still see fish inside the traps because it still catches them today, so that's uh, something fairly impressive. Well, here they are, the ancient fish traps of Bawarana. They're believed to be somewhere between three to 40,000 years old. If they are in fact 40,000 years old, they are the oldest man-made object on Earth. The Aboriginals were inspired by the pelican's beak to scoop up fish and that's the way you'll see the shape of most of the designs are. In the 1920s when settlers come to the area they actually took stones away to put into the foundations of their house and then the weir was built which stopped the fish being able to swim naturally or the native fish to be able to swim naturally up the river so in later years they put in a fish ladder to the side of the weir so that the fish can still move up and breed and do the things that they normally do. But it's truly a remarkable thing to come and see, not only for our First Nations people and their ingenuity, but just humans in general. Um, as you continue further down along the river, you'll come to a big bend. This signifies the end of the Barwon River and the start of the Darling River. And the bend is also the local's honey hole for fishing. So if you want to fish, come down wet a line here. Right next to the weir, you'll find the fish ladder. Don't confuse this with the ancient fish traps. When we went to the information centre, the fellow up there told us that uh, a lot of people come here and they think they've seen the fish traps, but all they've seen is the fish ladder. I don't know if the GoPro will pick them up, but if you have a look just down here in the water, there's, um, I can see carp just swimming around down there. And I think oh. I mentioned before that Can't they're do. a pest. So if you ever catch one, make sure you leave him on the bank, don't throw him back in, it's illegal. Turtle, living. Oh, wow. All right, so if you come into Bawarana, or as the locals call it, Breeg, because sometimes Bawarana's a little bit of a mouthful to say, <laughs> um, it is an RV friendly town, so you'll find plenty of parking for your, your setup when you come down here. There's also water available. It is bore water. We filled our tanks up with it. It wasn't too bad, was it, Al? No, it's pretty good. It wasn't too bad. It's, yeah. got, it's got that eggy sort of smell to it, but not as savage as what it is up in Winton. Um, <laughs> and there's also um, a dump, a dump point. point, yeah, which yeah. is all behind the information centre. So if you come here and the gates are closed to the water tap, and you'll see <laughs> it just in behind the information centre, just go and see the guys' info centre and they'll open it up for you. All right, we're getting ready to leave Bawarana this morning, but we thought we'd just take you for a bit of a drive along the main street. There's not a great deal here, but there is a supermarket um, and there's a pub, of course, there's a souvenir shop. Um, pretty much all you need in these small country towns, isn't it? It is, yeah. Fuel, yep. as well, pharmacies, so yeah, it's there's a nice little community. And plenty of bait and tackle when you come here. Just over this side here, you can see the building. That is the information centre, and that was really worth the visit. It was. And the nice young fellow. Gentleman here in the blue hat, mm. he gave us plenty of good info about the fish traps. He was, uh, did, he was quite nice. It was really good. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, so we got a uh, little bit of a free tour. That was yeah, good. It was um, good. But you can do a tour, it was closed today. You just go down, you see the guy at the museum, he does a walking tour around the fish traps, tells you all the history about it. We're spewing, it's only because he's injured his leg and he can't walk real well at the moment. So unfortunately, we'll just have to come back to Bawarin or another day and try and do the full tour. But anyway, we'll see what happens in the future for that. Well, Al, we spent a couple of nights here in the campground of Bawarin. What'd you think? Uh, it's actually quite nice. It's um, rather large, lots of room, lots of trees, uh, lots of shade. At night, it's fairly quiet, so it was pretty good. Wasn't too bad, yeah. There is a few trucks that go up along the highway, but I'm going to say it, we've done a lot of free camping. This is probably the only free camp that we've stayed at so far where I've felt a disturbance in the force. Yeah, at times at night, you're like, what was that noise? What's happening outside? Um, it was a little weird, but it was still safe and okay. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> and as I explained a little bit earlier, it is co-located with the rest area, so you do get people rolling in to use the bathrooms at yes. any time throughout the night. So Yeah, and that's yeah. probably what the disturbance was, and we weren't used to it. <laughs> I think so. But anyway, it's still a great place to come and stop, even if it's just for an overnighter, um, recharge, refuel, and get moving for the next day. Yes, very good. It is very good. All right, off to Burke we go. Off to Burke. We've made our way out to Burke this morning. Um, we're going to go into town. We're going to do a little bit of shopping. 
Yes. But we've just come into the information centre at the moment where you can get some fresh drinking water and they've also got a dump point here and plenty of room to turn your caravan in. Yeah, it's um, pretty good actually. They it's set up. it's good. very good. The information centre looks really interesting too. So we're going to pop in there a little bit later on. But we'll go and get some shopping. We'll fill up with some fuel. We're going to head out to a campsite which is about 15 k's north of town um, called Mays Bend which apparently is quite good out there by the river. So that should be quite nice. And then we're just going to day trip in and out of Burke for the next couple of days. It should be good. So come along and join us as we check out Burke. All right, just on our way out to a campsite, we thought we'd do a quick stop in at the uh, back of Burke Information Centre and see what there is to do around town. We're going to be here for about three days, so it should be good. Well, Al, it really pays to go into the information centre. We are on our way out to Mays Bend. We walked into the information centre, spoke to the young lady inside. She asked us where we were camping. We told her and she said it's fully closed out there. Can't get in because of all the rain that they've had. All the black soil's turned to quicksand almost out there. Yes, we would have been staying a lot longer than a couple of days. <laughs> so now we're going to go and book ourselves into Kidman Camp, which he's recommended as a great caravan park, just on the northern side of Burke. And we're going to base ourselves out of here for the next couple of days. We'll get around and explore the area. But I tell you what, just what she told us inside then, uh, inside the information centre just then, about the things to do around Burke. This looks like it's going to be a pretty good trip. It is. Yeah, lots I'm glad of we things come to out. do. Oh, definitely lots of things to do. I didn't even know that Brake and Miranda had been out here. Anyway, well, no. there you go. I knew something you didn't. There you That's go. unusual. <laughs> <laughs> she knows a lot more than I know. All right, we'll catch up with you a bit later on. We get in the van park. After the advice we got at the information centre, we went down the road and booked into Kidman's Camp. It's a great little caravan park, but of course, because we're on power and we now got plenty of water, Alison's once again washed everything that we own. Good on you. When we got down to Kidman's camp, the girl down at reception, she just said to us, look, you go up, you pick a site wherever you like because it's off season, so there's plenty of stuff here. So we thought because we're on power and water that we'd pick something that uh, had a lot of shade and you can't whinge about how green the grass is here. But the sites themselves are really, really roomy. Let's take a quick look around here. We'll get in the side of the van here. They're all drive through and we've got it all the way back down there to the road. How's that? Tell you what, it certainly feels good to have this green grass under your feet. Okay, so we've come into Burke this morning and we've come to Central Park, which is a beautiful park. Lots of shaded areas and places just to sit down and relax. Very, very green. What do you think about it, Al? I think it's quite beautiful, actually. It's a very large area um, and very unexpected for the middle of town. Uh, it's got lots of it's lots of different activities you can do, like uh, there's the basketball courts, there's the children's playground, there's a huge skate park, there's big open areas. They've even got the uh, road safety um, map on the ground so the kids can either walk or ride or scoot around it's it's quite brilliant in picnic area and shaded areas plus um something for the bigger kids probably the big bowl bowling club and yeah. the beautiful greens <laughs> it's a massive bowling club here and we've been driving around like sort of this region i want to say say 300 kilometers all around burke mm. for maybe the last two weeks or so and just about everyone we've run into when we say yeah we're going to head to burke they say you've got to go to the bar and get a chinese food Yes, it's apparently quite legendary. Yes, <laughs> anyway, then we spoke to the girl at the information centre yesterday and she said to us that um, it was legendary but they've changed ownership and it's just not quite the same, but either way. Obviously the original owner set some high standards, but it's still standards. very good apparently. It is. <laughs> And the other thing to come and see when you come into Central Park is Poets Corner because I didn't realise, or we didn't realise, when we decided no. to come to Burke, we thought we were just going to come here to say that, yep, we've been to the back of Burke. Yes, we did. <laughs> we didn't realise there was so much history here. Mm. But Poets Corners has some some of Australia's greatest writers, Henry Lawson, Charles Bean, um, Breaker Morant. Yes. And Will Ogilvy. It's just a, yeah, it's a great place. And they have a little... Um, memorial or a little dedication here to those poets and give you some of their literature that they they published or some of their poems that they published it's really good to see them yes yes especially charles bean he's not just um known for world war one his world war one contributions it's pri prior and after the war his contributions which yeah. is quite interesting it's very very interesting so we're going to go for a little walk around town there's lots of historic buildings here in um, burke to have a look at so we'll mm. go around and check it out
the cenotaph here in Burke is really good. Um, and what I like about it is just the wording that they've used here to the sacred memory of our brave boys who paid the supreme sacrifice. There's so many old historic buildings around Burke, it's really great to walk around and have a look at. Steve's checking out yet another bakery. Yeah, but this one's 100 years old. They've got to be doing something right. <laughs> Think of the waistline if he tasted every bakery. Yeah, yeah, I might be thinking of the waistline, but now I'm thinking about a pie. <laughs> Well, here's something else that's interesting in Burke. This is the Crossley engine. Um, something we certainly didn't know was this was once in the powerhouse down in Sydney and was used to power Sydney itself. Yes, it was. Yeah, then it went up to Coffs Harbour. It was used up there for a while. Ended up out at Narromine to run a water pump for irrigation. Mm. And now here it is, fully restored in Burke. It's pretty interesting. It's actually. very interesting, yeah. Yeah, so it's powered Sydney was used in a business in Coffs Harbour and yeah. irrigation in Narromine, so yeah. very different uses. Very diverse life, but think about the power that's used to generate for Sydney these days. They used to do it back in the day, back in the 30s. Mm. What do you think about all these public spaces around Burke, Al? I quite enjoy them, actually. It's um, a nice use of the, the land that they have here and to highlight some of the features, such as this lovely river that we're about to see. Oh, yeah. We'll just put the camera <laughs> in a minute and show you um, just a, a glimpse of the Darling River. But, yeah, it's such a, a beautiful place and they're all, like, really clean and everything's green. It's Yeah, and they've got the facilities, like, places to sit, the shade to sit in, um, amenities. So, yeah. Um, it really encourages you to get out and, and see, see the place. Oh, for sure. Oh my goodness. All right, check this out. <laughs> huh. So this is the old port area um, that was in Burke. Burke used to run paddle whalers where they used to pick up the wool and they used to take it down the river towards, I think, well, Kenya, but I'll drop in the bottom if I got that wrong. Yeah, but uh, the river's looking really good at the moment. We've read and seen a lot of things about the, the Darling River, I suppose, over the years. and. For this part of it here, to me, just as a just as a bloody nobody, um, it looks really nice, doesn't it? It does. Well, unfortunately, we can't get the drone up for you here because there's an airport here in Burke and it just blacked out all our um, flying restrictions, which is a little bit of a pain in the bum because you get such good pictures from the drone when it goes up. But yeah, hopefully, what we show you here from the old wharf um, just you know gives you enough to give you an idea of what it looks like, and certainly throw Burke on your list if you're coming out into uh, Western New South Wales because it's beautiful out here. Yeah, definitely don't uh, just have a five minute stop. Definitely stop for a day or two yeah. and enjoy, enjoy the region. From the viewing platform upstairs where we just showed you looking out over the river, you come underneath and you can see the actual old um, port itself and it walks you down and in underneath and right to the river's bank. You know, it's really weird, but um, since we've been to North Queensland, and I don't know why, it's obviously just in your mind, but every time I stand near a water's edge now, all I think is bloody crocodile. So here we are, the old wharf in Burke, complete with tree. Okay, so we've come down to Percy Hobson Park, which is a big water tower um, just here in Burke, which has been mural with Percy Hobson himself. There he is. That's fairly impressive, Al. It's very impressive. It's great painting. Well, that wasn't Percy a bloody interesting character. He is a very interesting man, yes. Um, there's a quote that says, he's not the person who belongs to Burke, but Burke belongs to him. Yes. Such was his contribution here in town as a sports champion. He yes. started, or he taught himself to high jump, didn't he? He did in his backyard. Yeah, he used to jump ropes. Anyway, a, a coach spotted him from down in Sydney and invited him down, so he got the train down, jumped off the train, ate a pie and peas, and then went on and broke a 28-year-old record for the biggest jump in Sydney at the time. I think it was uh, six foot eight he jumped. Yes, he regularly got on the train Friday afternoon and got the train to Sydney and back on Sunday afternoon to start work Monday morning as an apprentice butcher. There you go. Yeah. Then he went on and he represented Australia at the Commonwealth Games, or well, then known as the Empire Games in mm. Perth. 
Um, and but unfortunately didn't make it through the '64 Olympics in Tokyo because he injury. Sh- was yeah, it? injured his knee, mm. and he wasn't able to compete anymore. But uh, yeah, sad ending to a brilliant career, but absolute legend in those parts. Yeah. He definitely is. He was. He's an interesting man, and it's a beautiful mural. Um, representing his achievement. Yeah, and as we said a thousand times since we've come into Burke, stop, have a bit of a look around. Um, just the history around the town, it's absolutely fantastic. Cool. Okay, so this is the historical graveyard. We're going to go up and have a look at Fred Hollow's grave. There's a couple of funerals going on here today, so we're not going to um, film too much while we're here, but we will go up and have a look at his grave site. All right, so this is Fred Hollow's grave under this large stone. It's quite an impressive monument. It's very hard to make out the name on the stone. It just runs across the top there. If you're not too sure who Fred Hollows was, he was a world famous surgeon whose research led to returning the sight of tens of thousands of people. He was an Australian icon and he chose Burke as his final resting place. If you come out to the old cemetery, you can do a tour. You get the tour, I showed you the, the map as we were coming in and it all correlates to a number. Here's the tip, take a photo of that and then bring it with you. And then as you walk around, just look for the signpost with a number on it and that correlates to the grave or the reason why it was marked. Continue for one and a half kilometres. If you're heading out to the Burke Weir and Old Lock, you get diverted off the road onto um, just a bit of a dirt track. It's pretty easy to follow. I probably wouldn't come out here if it was wet because it's all black soil. I think you get bogged pretty quick, but we're going to roll out and see if we can find the weir. Should be pretty interesting, eh? It's very interesting. I didn't expect we'd be driving out here, but it did say on Wiki Camps the last part of the road's gravel, but pretty easy to, um, to get along. Okay, so we've come out to the historic Lock and Weir here in Burke and we found yet another sign in the bush that you can't read. <laughs> can't we now? No, it's a bit difficult. All right, we'll give you a bit of a look around. So obviously here's the Darling River. It's a beautiful river to come and have a look at if you get the opportunity. And then here is the Weir and I, I take it because we can't read the sign but the concrete, concrete structure that you can see over the other side there, I'd say that's probably the Lock. But check out all the birds sitting over there just waiting for the fish to come over the weir wall. We saw the same thing around the fish traps in um, Brewarawa, which uh, was obviously very interesting, but yeah, they obviously cut themselves out a pretty good living in these sorts of places. What do you reckon, Al? Interesting. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Because the sign, just saying, because the sign's not here, you can't bloody tell what's what. I can obviously tell what the weir is. I'm not 100% sure what the lock is or where the lock is, but... So that was the lock and weir. We're pretty sure that the concrete structure on the other side is the lock, but we're not 100% sure. Put okay, this up in the comments section if you, if you know where it is, because we couldn't see any other logical place for it. Um, we're going to take a half-time break here on our tour of Burke. We're going to go back to the van park and have a little bit of lunch and sit down for a while. Then we're going to go for a drive out to the campsite where we intended on staying without the caravan just to check it out. And that way if we can get in there we can give you a bit of a look to see what it looked like. Um, and we're going to go and have a look at an old bridge if we can get onto it. This one is very similar to the one that we saw in Brewarrina. But this one you can't walk on because of its structural integrity. But it's still here so if you get a chance to check that out, we'll check it out. But what have you thought of Burke so far, Al? It's very interesting. I've quite enjoyed my time in Burke. So, and given that we are out of season, there's still lots to see and do. So, yeah, definitely stop and stop for a couple of days. Uh, yeah. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I think so too. It's, it's a beautiful little town. And as we said, we're, we're sort of getting around a, bit, a little bit today because we're um, pressing for time. I'm going to tell you what that's all about uh, at the end of today. Okay, so a little correction to the video. I said that if it was a wet day, don't come out along that track. And I think that part of it's right. Um, but there is a sealed road, which we just found. <laughs> it's always the way. Good old Siri. Anyway, this one seems a little a lot more comfortable to drive along um, and it only leaves you the very small gravel section as you drive down onto the weir itself. Ali and I are having one of our favourite lunches on the road. We love it because it's quick, it's simple and it's tasty and all it is... Vicky cheese and tomato. Well, and if you want to make it a bit special, throw a couple of burger pickles on it, it's bloody fantastic. But I, I'll give you a tip, 
we use sayos and they're fine like i mean that's what you normally use but these traditional squares from Woolworths we can't tell the difference between them and a sayo can we no, we can't. It's actually quite a nice tasting picky. Um, it is. And for like, and they're a dollar. And the difference is, these come in these trays. And when you've got them in your van, or your biscuits don't break when you're driving around, do they? No, no. no. It's pretty good. It's economical, that's for sure. They're really good. So I think lunch today is going to cost us less than about three bucks. That'll be good. Bloody <laughs> fantastic. Okay, so we're coming down to, uh, I think it's May's Bend, it was called? Yeah, May's Bend. And this was the campground that we're going to come to, but the lady at the information centre said that she wasn't quite sure of the road condition. She did believe that um, it was impassable, but it's not. I think what it was, it's the black soil and they've had a lot of rain. Yeah. Uh, and once you drive into it, if it's boggy, it's boggy and you stay in for a while. That's sure. right. Once you're in, you're in. Right. <laughs> So, and I can see what she means because you can see uh, where people have dug in. So, probably the last few days has been sunny, so probably dried it out a bit. Yeah. But who knows? And we we're just run. saying the other um, the other side of the coin is is that you come down here on in these conditions where it's good, mm. but you get a lot of rain or some rain while you're down here, it might be a bit difficult getting back out. But either way, I think it's a pretty nice Continue campsite. Everybody says it's kilometers. really good down here. So. So you can see here, there's still a little bit of water laying around down here. It's not too bad because you can get around on the side tracks, but um, yeah, I think it'd fill up with water pretty quick. It's very low lying down here. Well, here's the camp in here. This is the free camp at Mays Bend. What a beautiful place. I'm spewing now. Yes, it's disappointing. I guess we could have come and had a look. Yeah. But um, it might have been wet. It's still quite wet a couple of days ago when we rolled into town, so. Yeah. Live and learn. I would have, uh, should have just dropped the bloody caravan back at the information centre and then drove out here and checked it out for myself. Oh, we might even come and stay here a night, Alley Cat. Yes, we can do that. Beautiful. Of course, even beautiful campsites like this one here at Mays Bend get destroyed by the ferals that get down here and leave all their rubbish lying around. It's disappointing. Yeah, it's very disappointing. There's buckets of crap here. There's rubbish over there. Someone's jocks lying over there. I won't show you those. You can see the white pile of paper over there. I'm going to leave that to your imagination, what lurks below. But that's uh, that's just bloody feral. I mean, you know, act like you're human. Um, and there's lots of broken glass. And we actually got warned about that back in Bree as well. Lots of glass. The... Um, Council tries to get along and clean it up a lot, but it's everywhere. So it, that's the disappointing part uh, uh, so far. It uh, is. I found it's just, here, oh gosh. Right there. Yeah, just be careful, people. <laughs> it's just, um, you know, just pick up your shit and take it with you instead of leaving it laying around everywhere. Because what will happen is the councils will come out and they'll just close these places down to people for camping. And I'm not mm. saying, you know, like it's regular campers. These look like weekend warriors just come out here to get on it and have all a bit local. of a mighty time and just leave all their shit lying around. It's not on. Ghost gun. This is the biggest one I think I've ever seen. This is enormous. <laughs> it's huge. Isn't it? Uh, I reckon it's, it's wider than the car. Definitely wider than the car. Look at the size of the branches in it. Holy dooly. Oh, that's incredible. Love to know how old that bugger is. Okay, as we promised before, we said we'd come and have a look at the old bridge that goes over the top of the Darling River here in Burke, and this hooks up with the one that we saw down in Bawarana. Um It's a little bit hard to get to because of the no pedestrian access, so we're just going to drive slowly over the current bridge because that's where you get the best shot of this bridge. But you can see it's of a very similar design as what we showed you down in Bawarana, and it was to allow the paddle steamers to run up and down the river and tow their barges with the, um, the bales of uh, marine, uh, sheep wool on the back. It's got a big span. It's a very big one, that one, yeah. yeah. Well, it's official now. We've now been to the back of Burke. Excellent. We can tick it off our bucket list. <laughs> we certainly can. And the other thing that's official is this is the end of our episode. It is the end, yes. Um, just before we go, though, we've got a, a message to say that we've been waiting for some warranty work to be done on the van since we're up in the Cape, um, and we've got a message to say that it's all been approved, get in and get it done. So we spoke to the repair, and they said, well, we can get in in the next um, two weeks, and we thought, well, that's bloody fantastic. The only problem is we've got to go back to Brisbane to get it done. So we're going to do it, aren't we? We are, yes. With a good opportunity to go and get it done. So we're going to head north from here where we are now in Burke, and we're going to do a couple of places where we haven't been before, but we're also going to go and stop at an old favourite somewhere else. So 
Come and join us for next week's adventures. If you like this week's episode, make sure you like it. Subscribe to our channel because it's going to help us grow into 2024. And leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. See you next week. Bye-bye.